another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented by the three great Linux home brighteners, Linux Clear Gloss, Linux Cream Polish, and Linux Self-Polishing Wax, created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. Today's curious adventure, death. By Ricochet, or Nick Carter, and the mystery of the abandoned gravel pit. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick solved the mystery of how the bullet from the abandoned gravel pit killed the heir to the Marquis Fortune. But first, here's something you should know. Millions have found what wonders Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, can do for walls. Now, millions more are learning what amazing new beauty the three great Linux home brighteners bring to floors, woodwork, and furniture. Linux clear gloss varnish, the durable super varnish that dries to an elastic transparent surface which protects all wood and linoleum in your home. Linux cream polish, which cleans as it polishes, leaving no oily film on your furniture. And Linux self-polishing wax, which beautifies your floors with a satiny yet tough non-skid finish that resists wear, water, and dirt. You'll find the three great Linux home brighteners at your hardware, paint, or department store. Your headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As we open our story, Nick is talking with a young friend of his whom Patsy has just brought in. But if it's not a criminal case, John, why come to me? Because it's the next thing to it, Nick. Well, all right. Let's hear it. Or better take notes, Patsy, in case we want them later. Of course, Nick. Go ahead, Mr. Nick. Nick, I killed a man this morning. What? Oh, it was an accident, of course, but he's dead just the same. Well, tell me about it. What happened? Well, I was shooting in the old gravel pit back of my place on the highway. I've been shooting there a lot, getting ready for the pistol meet that's coming up. Well, this morning, I was practicing out there when one of my slugs hit something and ricocheted. I never dreamed that a ricochet could get out of the gravel pit, but this one did, and traveled as far as the Marquis estate. You mean the Clara Marquis estate? Yeah, that's right. And the man I killed was her son, Randolph. Oh, well, that certainly ought to make front page copy. I should say so. Betsy, get me her file out of the file room. Coming right up, Nick. Now, John, where was Randolph when it was hit? At the back of the estate, helping one of his nephews rebuild the fence. Uh-huh. The nephew, Dave Barton, said he heard the shot, and then the whine of the bullet, and then Randolph fell over. He died instantly. Here you are, Nick. Our file on Clara Marquis. Thanks, Betsy. Now, let's see. Lives in a rambling old red brick mansion a mile out of town along the highway. No servants. That's funny, with all her money. Relatives living with her take the place of servants. Her son, Randolph, acts as general handyman on the estate. She handles all business matters herself. Mm. Jolly old soul, I should say. No one ever accused old Clara Marcus of being jolly. I've tried to get better acquainted with her granddaughter, Teresa, but the old lady won't let me take her out or go there to see her. I only know Teresa from what little I've seen of her around town and the few times I've driven her home. Now that I've killed her father, I suppose I'll never see her again. Wouldn't be in love with her, would you? Uh, No. Do do you think I I can be sued for Randolph's death? What's the coroner's verdict, you know? Well, he told me he was going to report it was an accident. Uh, John, how far is it from the gravel pit to where Randolph was killed? About a quarter mile. The Brundage place is in between. Old man Brundage was, was out picking berries in the back of his place. He says he heard the bullet whine over his head. I suppose there's no doubt about the time? No, no. The sheriff checked on that. Randolph was killed while I was shooting in the pit. No mistake about that. I see. Well, was the bullet identified as coming from your gun? Well, not exactly. It was too badly mutilated, the sheriff said, to be identified as having come from any particular gun. Ah. It was all flattened and, and twisted. Well, from what you tell me, John, it looks as if you're responsible, all right. For the funeral expenses and so on, at least. Well, I know that, Nick. I just want to be sure I don't get hooked for what money I've got saved by a damage suit later on. That's why I want you to investigate this for me right away. I want to have it proved an accident so that nothing can come up later to put me in the wrong more than I am now. Yes, I see what you mean, John. You want me to be sure that we know now all there is to know. Then we file that information away and hope we never need it, right? That's it exactly, Nick. 
Will you do it? I certainly, John. I have nothing else on my hands for the moment. Shouldn't be a long job, nor a difficult one. Now, first, I want to have a look at your gravel pit. All right. I won't be there, but Mother will let you in. I, I don't suppose there's any chance I didn't fire the shot that got Randolph. Now, the chances are you did, John. I want to determine the degree of negligence involved. If there's none on your part, you can hardly be held liable for the accident. Okay, Nick. I'll leave it to you. I'll be seeing you. Right, John. And don't worry. I think I can clean this up for you. It doesn't seem possible that a forty-five bullet could get out of that gravel pit. And especially not going fast enough to travel a quarter of a mile afterwards. Strange things happen with bullets sometimes, Betsy. I suppose. You heard what Mr. Brundage said. Yes, according to him, about as many bullets come out of the gravel pit as stay in. Said he's heard them whizzing over his head many a time. Well, he was probably exaggerating. But there's no question but what he heard the one that killed Randolph Mark was this morning. Said it went only about a foot or so over his head. Is that possible, Nick? Oh, yes, indeed. Perfectly possible. And from the way John May's target is set up in the pit... A bullet that did get loose might very well come right across Brundage's berry patch. Well, I certainly hope you find some way to prove Mr. May didn't do it. He's such a nice fellow. I don't expect to prove that, Patsy. You don't? By the way, how well do you know Teresa Marquis? Not too well. Think you could use her name to get us in to look over the grounds in case the old lady objects? Oh, gosh, Nick, that's a big order. Nobody has any say around there but old Clara herself, so I understand. I'll try it. What can we lose? That a girl. Let's attack them from all sides at once. It's so nice of you to see us, Miss Marquis. This is Nick Carter. He's acting for John May. You can tell John, Miss May, that we won't make him any trouble for the death of my father. I knew you'd feel like that. You can also tell him that... I never want to see him again. Now, Teresa, I'm afraid you're blaming John May for something he couldn't help. We've just been to look over his gra gravel pit, and it seems utterly impossible that a bullet could get out of there and travel so far after getting out. I'm sure... If you're that... trying to tell her what happened wasn't May's fault, you can get going, and right now. How do you do? I'm merely trying to find out just how it did happen. Mr. Carter, this is my cousin, Dave Barton. He was with my father when he was... Killed. You're in charge here, Mr. Barton. I'd like your permission to examine the grounds around where Randolph was killed. Nobody's got the right to say who can snoop around here but Clara Marquis herself. Surely she could have no objection to... You'll have to get out. Dave, if you won't show Mr. Carter around, I will. I know Grandmother wouldn't mind. You're a fool, Teresa. But, well, come on. If I can do anything else for you, let me know. <laughs> putting up a new fence here, Brandy and I. We've been working out here for several days. We could hear young May shooting down in that pit of his all the time. This morning it was different. The shot sounded the same, only this time I heard the whine of the bullet right after it. Now there, uh, here's where Randy was standing. I was down there. The time I got to him was deader than a doornail. If I could get my hands on that young Mr. May... Mr. Barton, is that fence over there about 30 feet? The edge of your property? Yes, the bush is there on Brundage's side. He was picking berries out there somewhere this morning when Randy was killed. Nick, would you hear the shot before you heard the whine of the bullet going by? Well, certainly, Patsy. You would with an Army 45, which John was using. Because of the size of the bullet, its velocity is slower than that of sound. So you'll hear the report before you hear the bullet. Mm -hmm. Somewhat... Mr. Uh... Carter. Mr. Carter, Grandmother's very ill. We sent for the doctor, but she heard that you were here and for some strange reason wants to see you right now. Mrs. Marquis wants to see me? You sure? Very sure, Mr. Carter. She insisted. Can you come right away, please? I've heard about you, Nick Carter. I... I never thought I'd have any reason to hire you, but it's a strange world. I think heaven sent you here today. Well, Mrs. Marquis, I've been called many things, but never heaven sent. There you are this time. My time has come at last. I know it. Dr. Sutton always said a shock would finish me. And Randolph's death has done it. I know. Nonsense, Mrs. Marquis. You live for years yet. Rubbish. I'll be dead by tomorrow. And I... 
I, I want you to make the will before I go. That's why I wanted to see you alone like this. But, madam, I'm not a lawyer. I know what you are, and I know you're honest. You, you can draw up a will, can't you? Well, yes, of course I can. Very well, then. Do it. I've never had a will, and I, I want one. Oh, very well. If you'll tell me what disposition you want made of your property, I'll draw it up for you. Well, that's easy. Half my estate goes to Teresa. The other half is to be divided equally between my other five grandchildren. I see. And who's to be executor? Teresa. Is the only one of the whole bunch I'd trust. Of course, I'll have to have the names of the five grandchildren. Of course you will. Of course you will. They're Bartons. David, Forrest, and Jack. And the twins, Myrtle and Hazel. Very well, Mrs. Marquis. I'll have this ready for your signature in the morning. No, morning nothing. You'll have it ready for me just as soon as you can get it written down on paper. There's an old typewriter in the library you can use. Now, now, hurry up, Mr. Carter, and let's get this over with. <laughs> May I come in, Nick? Oh, yes, Patrick. I've finished what I'm doing. You've been writing out the old lady's will? Ah, what makes you think that? I can't think of any other reason why you should lock yourself up in this musty old library and spend an hour pounding on a typewriter. You're quite right, Patsy. But keep it to yourself. Does she take good care of Teresa? None of your business, my inquisitive young assistant. All right, suit yourself. I came to tell you the doctor's here. He says you'll have to wait before you can see Clara. She's lapsed into a coma. What? So she may come out and she may not. But if she does, her mind will be clear enough to sign the will, in case that was what you wanted. Well, what a bunch of mind readers around here. Okay, I'll wait. Oh, by the way, Nick, we're invited to dine with the Bartons tonight. Oh, good. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> You haven't seen the rest of them yet. Maybe you won't be so happy about it when you do. Why? You seen them? I'll say I have. Besides Dave Barton, the man we met when we first got here, there's Forrest. He's um, sort of a dope, apparently. And there's Jack, a rather good-looking kid of about 20. And, last but not least, there are the twins, Myrtle and Hazel. Hmm. They cute? Cute. They're 30 if they're a day. They look 40 and act 50. Hmm. They're a pair, no mistake. And incidentally, we're eating in the kitchen, if it interests you. Where we eat is secondary, Patsy. It's the eating part of it that really interests me. That kitchen is something, too. I just saw it. It's the most homelike part of the whole house. Cozy and comfortable. I don't think it's a bit bigger than Madison Square Garden. And with a shotgun behind the door to add just the right touch. Oh, Patsy, I want you to take care of this will I've drawn up. The moment old Clara comes to, have her sign it. And if you're fond of Teresa... I pray that the old lady does come to before she dies. All right, Nick, I'll take care of it. Good. Now I'm going to call John May and tell him to come here to the Marquis estate about 8 o'clock. Well, why do that, Nick? You may start something. Maybe, but I think it's the wise thing to do. I want you to find Teresa and persuade her to go and meet him in the drive when he blows his horn twice. Now, that's important. Okay, Nick. She's to meet him in the drive when he blows his horn twice. <laughs> get it, Nick. Couldn't you find a better time and place for me to meet Teresa? A better time, perhaps, but not a better place. John, I want you to take Teresa away from here at once. Are you kidding? I am not. The odds are that you'll be saving her life. Before morning, she may be in deadly peril. Believe me. Okay, Nick. I'll take her. If she comes... Oh, John! John! Teresa! Oh, darling. Oh, John. Which is my cue to... <laughs> this morning, a shot rang out and Randolph Marquis fell dead. Once again, a shot has startled the Marquis household. Who is dead this time? And what will be its effect on Nick Carter and his attempts to learn the real facts behind Randolph's death? We'll see in just a moment. If you're having difficulty keeping your floors spick and span these slushy winter days, here's the answer. You needn't have track-in trouble at your house, not when you use Linux clear gloss varnish to protect your floors. You see, Linux clear gloss varnish resists both water and dirt so that they're easily wiped away. And Linux clear gloss provides an elastic, durable finish that really wears. 
retaining its lustrous, transparent beauty for a long, long time. Yet it's easily brushed on, and it lessens your housework amazingly. Linux Clear Gloss even resists damage by hot grease, boiling water, fruit acid, perfume, and alcohol, making it the ideal protection for every wood and linoleum surface in your home. Yes, Linux Clear Gloss Varnish is the finest household protective finish you can buy. Depend on it, as so many wise homemakers do. Ask your dealer now for Linux, L-I-N-X, Linux Clear Gloss Varnish. You'll find all three great Linux home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And now back to our story. The report of the shotgun which startled Nick and the rest of the Marquis household seemed to come from the room where Clara Marquis lay dying. Nick and Patsy raced to the door of the room, only to find the twins, Myrtle and Hazel, standing in the doorway, staring fascinatedly at the old lady's bed. What's happened? What was... Don't look oh. at her, Patsy. Oh. oh, it's ghastly. Face has been blown away. Why, she's... Why, Dr. Sutton. Dr. Sutton. What's happened to him, Nick? Why, he's out cold, Patsy. Oh. A blow in the back of the head, I should say. Dr. Sutton. Oh. Uh. What's happened to you, doctor? I don't know. I, I was alone here with a patient. Something hit me. That's all I know. I don't even know where whoever hit me came from. Well, whoever hit you did for the old lady, all right. Did either of you girls see anything? No. Where are your brothers? Where were they when this happened? Oh, come on. You might as well tell me if you know. Oh, all right. I'm going to call the sheriff's office. You suppose you two could sort of stay here with the body until someone gets here? We'll stay. Well, uh... Nothing more I can do for her now. I think I'll get some fresh air. Want to step outside with me, Mr. Carter? Why, of course. I'll be right with you. Oh, Patsy. Mm -hmm. Will you pack up the doctor's things and bring them out to the car? Surely, Nick. All right, doctor. Let's get out of here. Uh, terrible thing, Mr. Carter. Terrible. Yes, it is. Poor uh, old lady. She wouldn't have lasted the night anyway. What I wanted to tell you was this. Patsy said it was very important to Teresa to get that will signed. So I gave the old lady an injection which revived her long enough to read the will. Then she signed it, and Patsy and I witnessed it. Was that right? Perfect, Doctor. Perfect. You have the will now? No, I gave it to Patsy. What? Well, you trusted her with it, so I did. Clara's murderer finds Patsy, has it? Patsy will be the next victim. Ooh. Come on. I wonder if she's still in Clara's room where we left her. I didn't know. I should have... Patsy! Patsy! Not here. Do either of you twins know where she went? No, she left. We thought she was with you, didn't we, Myrtle? Yes, we thought she was with you. Oh, come on, Doctor. We've got to search the house. There's no time to lose. Well, Doctor, we've been through this house from cellar to attic. She's not here anywhere. I don't like it. How about the carriage house? There's a light upstairs there. Oh, yeah, sure there is. Well, let's have a look up there. Oh, that's funny. John May's car is still here. Yes. Didn't take Teresa away after all. I wonder why. Well, I hope we find Patsy up here. Merciful heavens. Oh. Martin, stop that. Let John alone. You keep out of this. This dirty murderer is getting what coming to him. The law won't do nothing to John May, but we will. Oh. Martin, if you touch him again, I'll shoot to kill. You wouldn't have the nerve. I'll plenty of nerve for cowards like you. All right. You're on top for now. But we'll get him later. See if we don't. Now, you two. Forrest and Jack. Let Teresa go. Uh, all right. Take that gag out of her mouth. Be quick about it. Oh, Mr. Carter. Oh, thank heaven you've come. Oh, doctor, you better have a look at May. He's pretty badly beaten up. Only thing holding him up are the ropes tying him to that post. Yes, in a pretty bad way. Dave must have hit John at least 20 times. What happened, Teresa? Well, they, they got John right after you left and made me come with them. They brought us up here and tied John to the post so that he couldn't defend himself. Then they gagged me. Hold on. You mean that all three of them, Forrest, Jake, and Dave, have been with you since right after I left you with John? Why, yes. Why? Has anything happened? I'll say there has. Take care of things, Doctor. I've got a job to do. Oh, 
Now, where is she? Where have you got her? Got who? What have you done with her? Oh, in the closet, I suppose. What the... Why, that's not... Drop that gun. Don't be a fool. Take that shotgun out of the middle of my back. You're the fool. Drop that gun. Oh, very well. Here. Since the body in the closet is that of old Clara, I suppose you must have Patsy under that sheet on the bed. Yes. What have you done with her? Not much. We had to twist her arm a little to make her tell us where she put the will, that's all. Isn't it, Myrtle? Yes. We have it now. It's torn in little pieces. All right. So you've got what you wanted. Now let us go. No. We got us a lawyer, too. We know you and your girl could go to court and tell what the will was, and that would be as good as a will. Yes. We aim to take care of you both. You can't get away with this. I warn you. Yes, we can. Easy. We'll say Teresa did it. Yes, we will. You didn't suspect us, neither will anyone else. We'll blame Teresa. Well, Patsy, I've heard about enough, haven't you? Oh, you don't? Sorry to hit a woman, but... All right, Patsy. That takes care of the twins for now. Now, let's see what you look like under that sheet. Uh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, wait till I get this gag out of your mouth. There. Oh, Nick, I thought you'd never get here. How'd you ever get away from that gun she was holding in your back? I've studied commando tactics, Betsy. One thing I learned was that if someone is holding a gun at your back, you can twist away from the gun faster than if someone can pull the trigger. Oh. Try it sometime. Thanks. I'll take your word for it, gladly. So, with Hazel, or Myrtle, knocked cold from the recoil of that 10-gauge shotgun, and Myrtle, or Hazel, out cold from the sock on the jaw I was forced to give her, we have peace, temporarily. Peace. Blessed peace. Even temporary peace. I hope the sheriff gets here pretty soon now. I'd like to get rid of these two vipers. Uh, viperesses, Nick. Viperesses. Before they try biting someone else. They had me fooled completely at first, Sheriff. I didn't believe either of those twins could handle as big a gun as a 10-gauge shotgun. Yet I felt sure, as soon as I saw that shotgun, that the forty-five bullet that killed Randolph Marquis came from its barrel. But why? Old man Brundage said he heard it whine over his head. Well, the whine of a ricocheting bullet, John, is one of the most deceptive sounds in the world. You can't tell really where it comes from. But I was right with Randy. I didn't hear any gun fired close. It was fired from the gravel pit, and the bullet came whining. Of course it did, Barton. The twins were clever enough to pick a mutilated bullet out of the gravel pit where John May shoots. They loaded it into a 10-gauge shell and fired it from behind the bushes on Brundage's property. The bushes acted as a silencer, probably. Both Brundage and Dave heard the wine had set up and assumed it was a ricochet from the pit. Who'd ever think a woman would figure out a way to load a 10-gauge with a banged-up bullet and then lay for a guy and shoot when somebody else shoots a quarter mile away? Why did they do it, Mr. Carter? Money, Teresa. Money they'd inherit from your grandmother, Clara Marquis. But I don't get it, Nick. How would Randolph, being dead, benefit the twins? His daughter would get his share, wouldn't she? Not if Clara didn't leave a will. That's the point around which everything else revolves, Patsy. But uh, how does that work out, Nick? According to the law of the state, if the old lady left no will, Randolph would inherit one half the estate. Uh -huh. And the five Bartons would inherit the other half, or one-tenth each. And if Randolph was dead? With Randolph dead, the five Bartons and Teresa, Randolph's daughter, would each inherit equally or one-sixth of the estate apiece. Well, how much difference would that make? Well, figure it out, Patsy. If the estate amounts to $3 million, as I understand it does, each twin would get $300,000 if Randolph were alive. Mm -hmm. But with him dead, they would each get $500,000, or $200,000 more. Oh. Wouldn't that be worthwhile for them? Gosh, that is some difference, isn't it? So when they found that old Clara was about to make a will, they had to stop it. Of course. They knew Teresa was a favorite and would get most of the money. So they killed Clara before she could sign the will I drew up. Well, then they must have found out afterwards that old Mrs. Marquis had signed the will before she was killed. How'd they learn that? Now that, John, we'll never know. Somebody said too much or too little. At any rate, they found out just enough to know that Patsy had the will and that it was signed. So they bided their time and got it away from Patsy. Then they laid for me to get rid of any possible witness to the existence of a will. Do you suppose they would have killed me, Mr. Carter? No, Teresa. Not if they had got rid of Patsy and me. I asked John to come here and take you away because I didn't know which way the cat was going to jump. 
and I was afraid the killer would try to nullify the effects of the will by killing you. But fortunately, the dear twin selected Patsy and me as the victims and you for the logical suspect. Well, anyway, I, I'm glad you asked John to come over here, no matter what the reason was. It settled things for him and me very nicely. It's just the way I wanted it to be, Nick. Although I hadn't hoped to get it for a long time yet. Which proves that you never know where your blessings are coming from. Or something. Well, anyway, good luck to you both. In just a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. But first, here's a suggestion. On a winter night, as the family gathers cozily at home for an evening of fun together, every moment is more enjoyable when home looks its inviting best. And it always does when you depend on the three great Linux home brighteners to keep woodwork, floors, and furniture sparkling. Your furniture, for example, regains its original gleaming beauty when you use Linux cream polish. For Linux cream polish cleans as it polishes, removing in one quick application all the cloudy accumulation of dust and previous polish. Yes, you save one whole step in your cleaning day routine when you use Linux cream polish on your furniture. It's truly the modern shortcut to furniture upkeep, taking only half the time. You'll find that Linux cream polish banishes messy fingerprints from your furniture, helps to hide ugly scratches, too. And there's no oily film on your furniture to attract more dust to make more work. So do ask your dealer for Linux cream polish. Ask for all three great Linux home brighteners. Remember, that's Linux, spelled L-I-N-X. You'll find them all. Linux self-polishing wax, Linux cream polish, and Linux clear gloss varnish at your nearest hardware, paint, or department store. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. What about it, Nick? Have you an exciting story for next week? Well, next week, Ken, I want to tell you what happened when I stopped off in a little town upstate to tell a rookie cop's family how sorry we were that he'd been killed in line of duty. Well, that doesn't sound very exciting to me. It was what happened after Nick stopped off there that makes the story. He found a household ruled by fear, fear and hate. With a mad old woman at the head of it who was convinced that she had been divinely appointed to set the world right. Oh, that's very different, Nick. Well, where did you come into it? Nick stopped a well-laid plan to commit wholesale murder and save the daughter of the house of fortune running into the millions. Just because the killer forgot to quote the right Bible verse at the right time. What do you call it? An eye for an eye. Or the mystery of the upstate murders. And that's all for now. So long. So long, everybody. So long to you both, Nick and Patsy. We'll be seeing you again next week. <laughs> Next week at this same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled... An Eye for an Eye. For Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Upstate Murders. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is featured in Street and Smith magazines. Lon Clark is starred as Nick with Helen Choate as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White... And the programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss varnish, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax, created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme fine quality paints. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is Mutual.